time for Agritalk, a discussion of issues and events important to rural America. Here's Mike Adams. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Agritalk. It is day number two of World Pork Expo in Des Moines, Iowa. We've had uh, some storms roll through during the night. In fact, still with us, still thundering, lightning, some rain falling. Has cooled things off. Um, the high today about 20 degrees cooler, they are saying, than yesterday. Go from the uh, low to mid-90s, a low to mid-70s today. So dodging some rain and uh, even a little hail earlier today here in the Des Moines area. But uh, still a good crowd and the uh, little later arriving crowd because of the weather, but still a good crowd indeed, especially going through the exhibits as we speak. We have a lot of guests uh, again for you today, including later in the program, we are scheduled to hear from, uh, get a phone call from Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack. The White House today announcing the establishment of the first White House Rural Council. And this will coordinate, this council will coordinate programs across government to encourage public-private partnerships to promote further economic prosperity and quality of life in rural communities nationwide. It'll be chaired by Secretary Vilsack, and we'll talk with him about that a little bit later on in today's program. Joining us now is Dr. Liz Wagstrom, Chief Veterinarian for the National Pork Producers Council. Liz, thank you for joining us. Antibiotics continue to be in the news. We've we've seen reports out of, uh, I believe, South Korea that they are looking to ban uh, using antibiotics in animal feed there. There's a lot of uh, attention on it here in the United States. Can you kind of give us an update where it stands? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, the South Korea situation, we talked with the Korean ambassador yesterday. He very much um, clarified that the headlines aren't exactly true. What they've done is they've banned commercial feed mills from mixing medicated feed. Producers can still buy over-the-counter feed antibiotics, mix them on their farms. So it was, I believe, more of a um, regulation of their feed industry than truly a regulation of antibiotics. They've also assured us that for imported pork that the residue limits that they have set that we've been complying with will not change and it will not impact our imports to Korea. So the headlines were misleading, so that's good to get that clarification. Now, what about here in this country? There are still efforts in Congress, uh, among others, to try to ban or limit the use of antibiotics in the industry. Where does that stand? Absolutely. We've got two things going on right now on the domestic front. Uh, one is that Mrs. Louise Slaughter has reintroduced her bill that's titled Preservation of Antimicrobials for Medical Treatment Act, or PAMPTA. Um, we don't think that it's got much of a chance in this Congress to go anywhere, but we are definitely watching it, We're trying to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Um, the second thing that's happened is uh, around FDA. And FDA by themselves in the last year have introduced Guidance 209. And Guidance 209 um, is trying to say, move away from any labels that would call um, for improvement of nutritional efficiency or growth promotion, what they call um, production uses of antimicrobials. The other thing that FDA would like to see is veterinary oversight of, of antimicrobial use, but they don't define either one of those. So that's an ongoing process that we're actively engaged in. The second thing um, with FDA that happened last week that was a bit of a surprise was that the Natural Resources Defense Council filed a lawsuit alleging that FDA has failed to protect public health from the mounting um, human health impacts of antimicrobial use in agriculture. Um, they cite two things. One is a 1977 notice that FDA put out, and then they themselves had filed two citizens' petitions that FDA had not responded to. What they failed to recognize is that over the years, FDA has had a consistent regulatory process looking at antimicrobials and animal feed, um, making sure there's not human health impacts. They've got the regulatory authority to withdraw them if they had the evidence to do so, and they have not been able to do that. So in the case of antibiotic use having uh, harmful impacts on human health, is that another case of misleading headlines? I believe so. We have numerous peer-reviewed risk assessments that have looked at what is the potential risk to human health for the use of antimicrobials in animal feed. All of those have showed negligible risk assessment, the la or neg negligible risk. The last one I saw was one on penicillin that said um, 
perhaps zero to one people per century would be impacted. So it's um, that's the negative impact that's nil from using them. We do know that animal health impact to stopping using them could cause us to put more animals in the food supply that may have been sick, recovered, and um, not potentially be as safe as what we're putting in the food supply right now. And quickly, before we let you go, there's been a change in that cooking temperature, uh, meat temperature for pork when uh, folks are on the using the grill or whatever they may be doing and worrying about getting that pork at the right temperature. What's that new uh, number to look at? We're very excited. 145 degrees. Once you hit 145 degrees, let your um, product rest for three minutes. It'll give you a juicy, safe, tender product. Because we tend, many of us, myself included, tend to overcook pork. Our grandmothers all taught us it needs to look like shoe leather, and we have the safest product on the market, and we don't need to cook the cook it to shoe leather temperature. 145 degrees, medium rare, let it rest, and it'll be a great eating experience. Great. Thanks, Liz. You, thank you. Dr. Liz Wagstrom, Chief Veterinarian for the National Pork Producers Council. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk trade with Doug Wolf, President of the National Pork Producers Council. You may recall yesterday he told us about a meeting he was going to have uh, with the delegation from South Korea, the South Korean ambassador. We'll get the latest on that and much more to come, including later in the program, we're scheduled to get a call from Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack to get the latest on this new White House Rural Council that he will be chairing. So stay with us. We have much more to come from World Pork Expo at the Iowa State Fairgrounds in Des Moines. This is Agritalk.